You're not supposed to see me yet. I screwed that up. <laughs> what is up, everybody? Welcome to Saturday. So first Saturday, new stream, who dis? Um, coming to you from Saturdays now at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Let me just say right up front, thank you all for, for sticking with me as I as I slide over to Saturdays. Uh, my Fridays were just getting too busy. I was getting stressed out trying to get stuff done at work and make it home and then get the stream rig all set up. So this has been uh, wonderful. I got to wake up nice and leisurely today, got to my stream. And last night I went to go have dinner with my family and I got to see Ben do his lion dance practice. So absolutely fantastic. Again, uh, thanks everybody for sticking with me. I really appreciate you sliding on down to Saturday. So what is up guys? I am Josh KI6NAZ. Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. I do this uh, now, Saturdays, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we try and just have fun with radio, show new things off on radio, talk about radio, answer questions about radio, uh, all in the order to create an inclusive environment in which people, you know, feel like they're welcome and, you know, we want you here and if you got questions, we'll answer them. And to help facilitate that, obviously, you got the YouTube. Thanks for hopping in here, by the way. But we also have the Facebook group and we have our Discord and links are in the description for both of those. Now, the Discord, after this live stream, we will be doing a after chat that's on the discord side and that's just a big voice chat for everybody to hop on there voice or text your choice you don't have to do you don't have to do voice if you don't want to and uh, we'll just have a lot of fun doing that i got a lot a lot of stuff to talk about today we're going to go through a couple of things so uh, just bear with me and we'll get through it all so comments oh yeah thanks everybody appreciate that appreciate you hitting the like button thank you for that uh just hit the like button thank you rochester new york hello from columbus i saw somebody from uh Yorkshire. That was pretty cool. Right on. What's nice about Saturdays, actually, I was just thinking about this. I was just on the, I was just watching DX Commander uh, an hour and a half ago or two hours ago. So now with your Saturdays, you could just have all kinds of amateur radio content live because you got Callum and I out there. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah, very good. Appreciate all the support. Definitely. So, um, <clears throat> okay. So, oh yeah, what's the other thing? Uh, I'm live, I'm simulcasting this to Twitch. Uh, I am Angry Shoverbot on Twitch, if you want to search for me. And uh, Loyal may post a link if he's watching, but uh, thank you admins that are out there as well. Yeah, that's, that's, Wyoming Ham actually nailed it. I'm getting a little older. 7 p.m. is just a little too spicy for me. So I had to, uh, I had to dial it back to five o'clock. Now for the, the Twitch side, uh, I live stream the after chats on Twitch. I don't do it on YouTube because it's just a lot of shenanigans and uh, that's more Twitch friendly content because it's not all about amateur radio. So you get the idea. So a couple of things. We got the North American CUSO party going on right now. I'm looking at 40 meters right in front of me, and it's it's popping. So if you have been playing on that or you're interested to see something going on in the bands, now is a good time to open that puppy up because there is a lot going on. So what was that? Yep. Oh, yeah. Carol said, I uh, hope the DX Commander will join us on Discord. That would be cool. Believe it or not, he actually uh, was on Discord. He hopped in for a little bit, but he was playing around with his OBS, and I think he was playing with his mic settings and whatnot. So maybe he will. That would, that would be a lot of fun. Uh, what else? Oh, I got a big shout out. Let me throw this over to the web. Man. Okay. So, you know, not too long ago, I did, I did that kind of introduction to Raspberry Pi video. So, Jason, KM4ACK, is like a Raspberry Pi guru. He's an app developer. His devoted station for amateur radio is the Raspberry Pi. And he made a script that once you have, just get the Raspberry Pi up and running, get it on uh, VNC, which is what he has right here, and you run this script, and it will install all those applications that I mentioned, uh, that image that I said, go download this image, flash it over, you can run all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. He goes a step beyond that. He'll ins It installs it and then sets it up for your call sign. So it takes you a huge way through getting set up on Raspberry Pi. This guy, absolutely an amazing video. Very nicely done to Jason. And big shout out to him. He deserves it. Go check it out. Go give him a sub because if you care about Raspberry Pi, oh my gosh, you're you're gonna you're gonna love uh, you're gonna love that stuff. So he has a ton of videos in that area. So man, big big shout out. 
So let's see what else. Um, okay. Yeah. Just a reminder to Jason at uh, Jason Hannibal, quirky QRP, still doing the $5 discount. If you use the coupon code quirky QRP HRCC on Etsy and the link should be in the description for that. And I'll take you there and Palomar engineers coupon code HRCC 73 when you use uh, that coupon when you check out from Palomar Engineers. So you can get a discount there as well. And hopefully if you watch my RFI video, you might be into uh, going after some noise on your shack. And so that would be kind of handy for that. So, all right, what else do we got? Let me check back to this. And we'll leave it at that. That's fine. Okay, good, 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 good. So who do we got in the chat here? Very good. Raspy and stretch because Buster didn't work on my SDR. Very good. Jason is the man. My whole pie build, follow his tutorial to begin with. Yeah, very good stuff. Yeah, it, it's pretty awesome. So I would check that out. We got somebody from Louisiana in the house. Richard Cortez, Chris KM6S from Ontario. Right on, Ontario is right down the street from me. Mm. Got something in my throat. I can feel it in the back there. <clears throat> That's not good. All the kids in the neighborhood or the kids in my kids' school have been sick. So I need to avoid that because I just got off being sick. So whew, I don't want to deal with it. Okay, so what are we talking about? Oh, I do have one thing I wanna I wanna flash to you. So let's let's do that. I almost forgot. So there we go. Great. Well that's working a treat. So last week, we had Becky Schoenfeld on uh, from the ARRL, and she was talking to us about On The Air magazine, and it came out, and this is actually looking at the ARRL app, I'm sorry, their website that you can pull up on your iPad or your phone or whatever, and I'm, I'm actually looking at it on my phone. Now, I'm, I'm not going to obviously go, go get a, a membership, and then you can, you can look at this yourself, but... I wanted to show you some of the imagery here. You know, that's the basically the table of contents. There's Becky, she's the editor. So just a lot of stuff um, that I was like, man, they're doing they're doing a pretty interesting thing. So like letting the smoke out, the magic smoke, walking through some Q and A's there. I thought that was a really cool article. But there was a question that came up when when Becky was on the show. She uh, wants some. Actually, a lot of people ask, what are the ads like? Are the ads the traditional QST ads? Are they changed more for an introductory, an introductory kind of uh, focus of amateur radio? And I'm happy to report it pretty much is. So this one's obviously to, uh, aimed a little bit for the makers, the Dr. Duino set. Uh, let's discussion on ionosphere. Let's find another ad. Making an antenna, simple antennas, very cool. A lot of how-tos, some satellite ops. Sorry if I'm going through this quick, but I'd like you to go check it out on your own. Um, and so there's a, a, an ad for Yesu with just handhelds and mobiles. Uh, West Mountain Radio, Anderson adapter speaker. And there was one in the back. Oh, big shout out. Check that out. Stuart Thomas, KB1HQS. He's on Twitter. He's got a YouTube account. He's got a book on operating portable great great article there as well that's morse code in the background there see that's really cool right they, they did a really cool thing with with the imagery of the the articles and everything i i really liked it so then alinko's got an ad really simple kind of i wouldn't say beginners but definitely the intermediate uh type of stuff quick so uh quick silver radio that's all stuff to get started in a shack soldering equipment etc and that's the last one so you know that's that's pretty cool. I thought that was really good. So for a first run, I think they're I think they're doing a good job. I'm I'm really I'm really happy uh, with how that came out. It looks really good. I enjoyed it. So right on. That was uh, from them. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So what are we talking about today? And remember, this is their first one, right? So they're going to keep doing this, and they're going to have even more cool articles. They're bringing back a podcast. Um, I, I know someone who might be on that podcast in the future. You might be watching him right now. I don't know, but we will see. He might be on the, the, the podcast. Uh, Dato Man says, hello from Sarasota. Passed my technician last Saturday. And I could take, what was that? I just missed it. Man, the chat's moving quick and still waiting for my call sign. Right on. 
uh, K8KZ8 says, I'm watching even though I ditched my Baofeng December 25th. Well, that's all right because we are going to look at other radios too. And we're going to compare a couple different radios. So what are we talking about today? Well, I will show you or not. And it went dark again. Man, I set this and it doesn't lock it in every time I do these streams. I don't know why this camera is so persnickety. Let's uh, go ahead and bump that exposure a bit. Wow, that's a lot better. So what you're looking at is my RSP1A, the attenuator that I talked about in the last video, but a whole host of more radios. We're going to look at a lot more Baofengs. We're going to throw a couple more Yaces on it. And I'm going to put that QRP radio on it as well because, because there was a, a question that was asked of me, how do kit radios all stack up to this harmonic stuff? And that's what we're talking about today is harmonics. And the basic thing to understand, and, and it is, you can get really complex with it, but the basic thing to understand is you have a fundamental frequency that you're transmitting on in whatever mode you're transmitting on, VHF, UHF, uh, not VHF, sorry, single sideband, FM, AM, you get the idea, Morse code. There's a fundamental frequency, and then there's harmonics that go further away from your fundamental frequency, and it's called the second, third, fourth, etc. harmonics. And those harmonics under FCC rules, right, for radios that are supposed to be mandate or uh, certified by the FCC or following FCC guidelines, needs to have a certain lower level dB. They need to be under a certain dB harmonic off of the primary frequency or the fundamental frequency. So these Baofeng tests, like the ones that showed up on QST uh, for January in their January edition, they were talking about all the Baofengs they tested. And they said, hey, all the majors passed, but the Baofengs, 9% were compliant. Almost all the other ones failed. And what they're talking about is you're comparing that fundamental frequency to all the harmonics and the dB in noise or the dB volume size of that harmonic. If it's too close to the fundamental peak, then it is out of spec for the FCC. So technically, it's creating noise elsewhere on another frequency. And the FCC doesn't want that, right? They want to try and keep things clean on the airwaves. So they've got some guidelines, and we'll talk about those. Christy said, uh, better light fund. No, I've got great lights. I've also got, I've also got another, actually, let me see. Can that, will that help? A little bit. I just probably need a light coming at it. We're using an overhead camera, so that's not really going to help a lot. But let me, let me show you how this all works out. Let me, uh, I set up this other camera rig and I'm, I shouldn't have done that for the live stream. It's mainly for the after chat, but okay. So we're sliding over here. We're going to do my favorite, the UV3R first. We're going to connect this guy up. The SDR play is already connected. Okay. Oh, come on. So we'll set him down. And I'm going to switch over to my SDR. Sorry, my, my uh, spectrum analyzer. And it's already running. Now, I'm, I'm kind of following it. It's very slow tracking, so it takes a while to do this. Basically, what I need to do, turn this radio on. And I need to put it into peak mode. So we'll test one, and then I'll walk through what I'm doing. So I'm going to hold down right now as we get to the end. It's now rolled over to the left. And we, there's your fundamental. It just pops right up. Now, those two spurs that are kind of stuck there, that's something going on within the SDR. I was not able to track that down. There's the second harmonic, third harmonic, and it looks like the fourth harmonic. So, okay, let's talk about that. All right. Woo! Oh, the chat room's in the background. Wrong chat room. Hey, Ham Radio Concepts. Right on. I just watched him uh, eat a freeze-dried uh, ice cream sandwich. I think he was at Gigaparts when he ate that. It was pretty cool. Those are pretty good. I like the texture of those things. So what are we looking at? All right. So the fundamental frequency is the frequency that I was just transmitting on. And if you remember from that video that I posted earlier in the week, I have a 40 dB attenuator in between the radio and the spectrum analyzer. So it's not going above zero. So everything we're looking at is a negative dB rating all up in here. 
So it is at negative 7.9 dB. Now, if we go to the largest harmonic, which is this guy. Remember, we're ignoring this one because that's inside the SDR somewhere. And I'll, I'll say this just for everybody who's watching this um, on the back end. If, um, where did it go? Nope. Well, why is it not doing that? There we go. Okay. That guy. Um, all right. So this is not a super accurate spectrum analyzer. So take that for what it's worth. It's fun to do a test with on your own. If you are concerned that your Baofeng or any radio for that matter is not within spec, the FCC guidelines, you know, find a friend who has one, go to your ham club and ask them if you can do a test and check it out yourself. But for in the shack at your home, if you don't have a spectrum analyzer like I don't, this is an okay way to go. So basically, what are we doing here? So this is at negative 58.7 dB. That's the peak of this harmonic. And the peak of our um, fundamental is 6.8. So if you took the difference between those two, it would be what, 52 and some change? Let me go back. 7.9. And this is 58. So it would be 50 and some 50 point something. To be compliant with the FCC guidelines, it must be over 40 dBs below the fundamental. So that means that this radio is. Uh oh, we're getting a page. If Becky Schoenfeld's watching and she heard that go off, uh, that was what that was. I didn't explain. Hello, watching your live stream. Could you help me with Pox Hack? Is that today? Did you just send that? Wait. <laughs> so I got a page. Thanks for sending me a page. <laughs> Ham Radio Poxag page. So <clears throat> that means that this radio is compliant. And if you're looking at the grid, so here's my, uh, here's a 10 grid line, and here's another 10 grid line. The other thing that we have to be under for radios that are under 25 watts of output, so HTs, is we need to be under 25 dB from basically the noise, the noise level. So we're only at a tad over 10 dB. So this is okay. Uh, I'm so smoking ape says I'm not an expert, but aren't harmonics multiples of the fundamental? Yes, that is true. The other peaks could be spurs, but they are tech, but are they technically harmonics? No. So the, the ones, the spurs that are just sitting up here, they're on there, whether I have anything connected to the spectrum analyzer or not, they're just there. There's something in that, in the spectrum analyzer itself, which is why I'm saying this is not a super accurate device. So don't, don't get too crazy on me. This is, again, repurposing an SDR for this thing. So you could say all your results are garbage and you should throw them out. And that's fine. You, you could say that. But what we're doing seems to be in the right direction and accurate. So, hey, uh, shameless plug for my podcast, Hamateur, Hamateur Hour Podcast by KD2KBZ. That'll work. Shameless plugs will fly. <laughs> and uh, we got Eric, he gave one too. So shameless plug for Eric, but I'm sure you all know Eric. There's no question about that. The fundamental can mix with other oscillating signals causing spurs in other areas other than the harmonics. Aaron Austin says, and that is also true. Again, the spurs that are showing up, I could disconnect the radio and we would still see those spurs. Uh, like I said, it's something likely within the, uh, the SDR itself. And I am using an RSP1A, which is not the one in the metal enclosure, although I don't know that that would matter really either because it's probably coming from inside that circuitry. So basically, just from our first look, the UV3 seems to pass. It is under 40 dB from the fundamental frequency, and it's under 25 dB from the noise floor. So, okay, good. Let's check out our next one. Um, I'm going to grab uh, Philip 
Muth, W0RH, said, Eric turned me on to you and K8MRD. Well, thank you, Eric. And uh, Mike's a pretty cool guy, too. So this is my oldest dirty Baofeng, right? We're going to test this guy out, too, next. So this, a special note, too, if you if you have a UV3R, different, um, different connectors for the antennas. This is a female SMA, and this is a male. So to support that, let's turn this guy off. To support that, you end up having to, oh boy, my son was in here, and now I'm missing my SMA connector. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. All right, hold on. We've got another adapter here, or not. Nope, not. Not. We're not going to get very far into uh, Baofeng land if I can't find one of these guys. Here we go. I was trying to show my kid um, some radio stuff, and I think in the process it fell off of the off of the table. So we'll insert our little barrel connector. So something you have to do too is you're as you're going to test multiple things. Come on now. There we go. But because this is such a slow SDR, uh, we got to go over here, and I'll show you it because it's something you're going to want to do. And you want to go from peak to raw, and I'll show you what that looks like. That raws everything out, takes down all the signals. You're going to see, though, those, uh, those little spurs are still there. There's one. And a second one's coming, and there it is. So... That's just the way it is. All right, so we got this guy on. Of course, that is the sound of the Baofeng. And we are going to transmit. Oh, that's the wrong one. We're on 146420. I'm going to wait for this to roll around again, and then we'll, we'll key up. Again, uh, a lot of this is because it's a slow scanning SDR. You're going to pay more money for a proper spectrum analyzer. Whoop. And here we go. So upcoming fundamental. There it is. Ignore those two spurs. There's the second harmonic. Third. Fourth. Fifth. A lot of harmonics. Sixth, seventh, woo, eight, man, this thing is a lot of harmonics. <laughs> All right. Look at this thing. Let me show you this one. <laughs> I wanted to give you the, uh, I wanted to build the suspense of you having to wait to see this guy. So look at all those harmonics. Oh, what happened? Did I have it? Ah, I had it on. <laughs> I left it on raw. My bad. We'll do that again. Now you can watch it live. So much for the, uh, the suspense. Those spurs could be from other stuff in your shack. The radio was off. If the radio was off, including the spectrum analyzer itself. All right, there's your fundamental. Shameless plug. We got another shameless plug. Good game ham radio bees and outdoors. Should cost at least a fiver. Speaking of which, shameless plug for my YouTube channel. All right, all right. Very good. Go check out uh, Good Game Bees and Ham Radio Outdoors. Okay, so we got a world of spurs here. All right. So let's let's do a quick math check on this guy as well. Oh, wow. Wait. Wait. Wait a second. We might have to... Uh, we might have to rerun that. And we got another pager. No call sign. Shout out. Come on, man. Oh, there. Why isn't it doing that? Uh, ZL1LAC. So there's your shout out, buddy. On the, Is that going to show up? Well, I'll show it on the, uh, the overhead. All right, 
So let's assume that this is part of it, but we'll, we'll also check out one of the closer ones here. So this guy, that was the one that was uh, spiky from before, and so is this guy. So uh, this one's 58. So you go, uh, this call this 10, 20, 30, 40. This is still within spec. But we're going to have to redo this test because I think this one uh, came in later. We want to make sure we get it. And that would be 1, 2, 3, 4 again. That's 40 dB below the fundamental. So I think that technically passes. However, um, let's see. This is negative 72. And that's negative 50. So also under the negative 25. Yeah. Uh, Rafael Gustavo de, I think it's Chunha, or anyway, very long name, says, Be, uh, besides Spurs, my Baofeng is completely deafened by FM broadio broadcast. So that's a good point, too. So Baofengs have, they also have kind of a tendency to get overloaded. Their front end, the front end receive on the radio gets extremely noisy. And sometimes even putting on a better antenna will deafen it. So, okay, I've cleared out the, uh, I've cleared everything out. We're going to peek it. Again, we're going to run that one one more time because I'm curious what we got going on. So there's the fundamental. There's your second harmonic. Actually, second harmonic is it where that spur was. So there's your third, fourth, fifth is right next to the other one. So they are in the same multiple. So maybe there is something that's, that's on and transmitting in that area or something else. And yeah, so there it is. It is on that. Okay, so it's on this radio. So it still qualifies, but man, oh man, look how far out that goes. That's all the way to 550 um, megahertz. <laughs> Somebody just text me, made you look. Thanks. We're going to put you on silent, I think. I realize I don't know what I'm doing. All right, paging is over. So this one technically also qualifies. Unless I'm doing the math wrong, I think uh, that is correctly how it's done. It needs to be 40 dB below the fundamental. Oh, K, K Booty sent that. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. I believe that it is accurate. The testing that I am doing is accurate. You can question that my um, spectrum analyzer is, is not accurate or it's causing some kind of problem. And you may be right. But everything we're seeing so far is adding up. The 40 dB of attenuation against a 5 watt radio is going to be somewhere in this in this range here that we have it, and it is below zero, so it should be under 40 dB of output power or output against looking at an S, um, a spectrum analyzer. So I think we're relatively accurate. But please, if you're watching this and and you have a comment or would like me to try something, go ahead and mention it. I'm going to flip over to the BFF8HP now. We're going to check that guy out. <laughs> Somebody on Discord, JR3792 uh, says, I blame Hosh for my lack of funds. Poxag, DMR, HF, all inspired by uh, all inspired by him, Eric, and K8MRD. Very good. You're accurate. The measurements you are talking about are relative and not absolute. Yeah, so Eric Austin, he's on my side. Anyway, it's close. So you could say it's borderline, which is what the ARRL said in their article. That would be okay to put it on the borderline list. I would say that particular UV5R, which is my oldest Jankopotamus, um, Jankopotamus radio that I have. This is my oldest Baofeng, by the way, guys. This thing's still going strong. I think it's maybe five years old maybe i when i bought this the only models that were available were the uv5r the traditional one and this guy and i bought it simply because it was different than all the uv5rs i had seen all right so the big boy the eight watt the bff8 hp we're gonna put that right in here i hope the kids aren't too loud because oh man there's somebody over in our house my wife has invited people over I'm playing radio, hiding in the garage, as every ham should. You know, I'm, I'm okay with getting my Fridays back to have meal with my family, but I'm going to keep hiding in the garage when I'm home. How's that sound? 
All right, we'll flip it over so you guys can watch this. All right, here we go. Now we're going to clear it out. We'll go to raw. Josh, would the Baofangs be the same harmonics for the Redivis? The Redivis Baofang? Uh, maybe, but m maybe not. Here we go. Uh, I may have this on low, so we may need to do this again. Second, or third, fourth. Uh-oh, look at that one. Fifth. Oh guys, I think we have our first uh our first failure. Yeah. I think we might have failed. Here we go. It's definitely borderline. And it already jumped to the borderline one. So that's negative forty four uh point nine DB. So call it forty five DB. Negative forty five DB. And our fundamental is four point two. So four point two, negative four point two minus negative 44.9 so it would be borderline at best uh, but it is also negative about negative 25 db from the noise floor so this one would technically be in violation um, depending on how thorough you were with the rules but you could definitely call it borderline and that is my bff 8 hp the radio that is made by uh b tech is it b tech or anyway it's one off amazon so uh paul leon 138 says i've got the tid radio version bff 8 hp and hit repeaters at 40 miles me too What's the limit from the noise floor? The limit? Uh, 25 dB. Uh, is that super chat? Yeah, I'm using Streamlabs for those that's watching. The things that pop up on the screen when somebody throws a super chat. So, yeah. Okay, good. All right, so we found our first technically not okay Baofeng. Definitely borderline. What's next? Let's go. I'll let you guys vote for what's next. So I have a UV Mark III. What is with the... Let's brighten that up a bit. This camera. I don't know. I'm going to try... Maybe I'm going to try a different... Uh, I might have to try a different webcam in the future. I'm not really liking these webcams anymore. They're okay for face stuff, but this stuff uh, is no no bueno. So this is a UV three UV three R plus, which this was its predecessor. People get these two confused. This is more like a UV five R with no keypad than it is a UV three R. Um, much fatter, much much fatter. You can see that here. Much fatter radio relatively same size but this guy functions more like a uv5r so i've got that um we have our wonderful yesu ft2 dr and we've got a uh, yesu ft4x which you've already seen this if you watch the video so we can skip that guy uh is that five pounds yeah five pounds surprisingly uk emergency services use the exact Baofeng models you've been testing which i find surprising they also use dirt cheap ones too. <laughs> uh, very good. FT2DR. Everybody wants to see FT2DR. Okay. So let's go ahead and take the signal stick with the BNC adapter off. Okay. So we got to flip it around again, but that's all right. Let's go ahead and turn off the BFF8HP. And then after that, we'll do the QRP radio, I think. It's crazy now that I have what I feel is a, a decently moving stream. Like, my hardware and stuff seems to be working okay for what I'm trying to do. How fast the time goes when I'm trying to just have a chat with you guys. 
it turns into like really difficult time for me to get everything I want to cover content wise, but also have like a good talk. So um, I do appreciate when you guys hop over on the live, uh, the live after chat, because that makes it a lot easier to, to let you guys talk and let me hear what you're thinking. Um, okay. So I already have it on one, four, six, four, two, zero. Let me flip this over. No way. Cops in, is that uh, cops in Alabama that use Baofangs? Really? That's hard for me to believe. All right. I bet you guys are interested in this one, right? Where is it? Okay. We got to wait for it to roll over again. I'm very interested. I actually didn't test this one. I just grabbed a bunch of HTs and I uh, threw this one. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, 146, 420. Here we go. How's that FT2 going to do? There's your fundamental. There's a dog barking. Uh, call that the second harmonic. Third harmonic. Fourth, I guess. It did bump a little bit. We're going to take this one all the way out and see. Okay. All right. So interesting. Not that much worse than the Baofeng, right? So let's back it up here. So this one's negative 3.3. So that means it's it's almost beating my attenuator, right? Negative 3.3. And then you've got 54, negative 54 dB. So you can just take the, the two numbers and subtract them, 51 dB. So it's it's fine. That's the highest uh, highest harmonic or highest dB harmonic. It's totally passable. But higher than I expected. Roberto Ellison says, I almost forgot your live stream. Wow. But I appreciate it. Again, I will say that for those of you that have hopped in after I got started, I, I thank you very much for for letting me kind of swap over to Saturday. Um, it's, it's for the family. It's for the things my son's involved in. And I'll restate, a lot of it's for my son uh, joining Cub Scouts, and I'm trying to get more involved in that. So I do appreciate it. Thank you for that. And there's kids screaming. Um, I'm going to get really mad right now, and then we're not going to do Cub Scouts anymore. That's going to be fun. So what are we going to do right now? Uh, let's uh, let's do the QRP radio, and then we'll call that, and we're going to talk about what's going on with interest in ham radio. I found a – well, someone posted it on Twitter to me. One more time, kids. I'm going to go in there and start raising hell. All right. I don't have a, a, a very good solution for, for doing this. So um, we're going to try it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Also, we could blow up the uh, cricket doing this. So just keep that in mind. Let me pull the mic over here. Here we go. Um, so I'm going to go into this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Nope, nope. I'm going to blow up your uh, SDR play here. Into the SDR play with the attenuator into some kind of hop down system into the cricket into that um it's off i'm gonna plug in the nine volt okay it's technically powered on i need to move so this guy's operating frequency is uh, i believe it is 40 meters so we need to do um, we need to move the frequency up let's move it let's move it down to 100 and see if we can no oh, is it not going to work for me let's go raw Why? So it doesn't want to go below 150 megahertz. I thought you could do that. 
I didn't really test this. This is uh, me totally winging it on the back end here. It's not liking it. I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to restart the app. So I've got it on the desktop here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, wait, maybe. Okay. So the start is going to be zero. Okay. So we want to bring that off of zero a bit. So we're going to bring it up to seven at 200. That seems about right. All right. Let's start it. Okay. Good. Uh, we're going to turn on the clock, the clock spur removal, which I did here. We're going to enable peaks. This should clear out in a second. This might be too too funky to do anything with. This is uh, some kind of segment that is they're crossing over segments and they're they're not they're not smooth. I'm just curious to see what's going to happen. We're just gonna we're gonna drop the hammer on this thing right now. All right, I'm gonna turn it on. We should see some activity just from that. Yeah, see, we picked up something on forty eight. All right, um, what is that's 30, 30, do, 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 do. Okay, so it's going to start right here. Here we go. Yeah, there's the fundamental. Okay. So, uh, I can't go any more to the... Oh, you know what? No, let's, let's drop this down to 100. Let's do straight up 100. Peak, raw, uh, clock spurs is on. I know it is time to. I'm on my last little sip here. Um, all right, so let's go back to peak. We'll redo. The, wait, no, clear it out. Why are there really that much spurs here? Just from the radio being on? Yeah, there are. Okay. Well, we're gonna dump some uh, CW into this bad boy. Yeah, it. I tried to make it close to the fundamental. Here we go. There's the fundamental. That's easy to read. And there's your spur. Your harmonic did move. All right. So that's that. All right. Uh, so we're at negative 70 dB right here. Uh, you've got one har the second harmonics here, third, and then the fourth. Now, this is negative 50 dB, and this is negative, let's go. Uh, that's negative 12 dB. Uh, so some simple math. Hold on, let's jump over. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, 50 dB. So technically, this QRP kit radio also doesn't meet the FCC guidelines. And this is sold as a kit. It's not necessarily an FCC because it doesn't go through the FCC. It's sold as, as parts, and you build it yourself. So it's not certified for... Um, through the FCC. You just buy it. I built this on a video. Again, that is my that is my cricket on 30 meters. I was wrong. That's 30 meters. Is it 30 meters or is it 40? It might be 40. I think it's 40. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It does fall under 5 watts. Yes. Use a watt meter on those handhelds. Those are FM stations, probably. Was in the 51 megahertz spur there without the radio? Well, I think it's actually when the radio is on. So let's go back and we can check that as well, just to be accurate. So I'm going to kill the radio. And we'll do raw. Yeah, no, it is. You're right. Take it all back. It's fine. I, I take back everything I said. Don't, uh, don't listen to me on that one. There is something there, though. So there's all kinds of funkiness. That might be the SDR. I should probably... I'm going to go pick up one of those SDR DXs, I think. The new one, the SDR Play DX. Um, center frequency is set wrong. No, it's not, because I want the fundamental to be on the left-hand side, and then so you can see all the, um, all the harmonics. So I believe that's the way you set it up. You want the fundamental far to the left, and then walk it on out. So walk it out. Can you show the Abri on the Yesu? Uh, the Yesu FT2DR or what? 
more likely you destroy the radio somehow by mistake. They are cheap. Replace it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. All right. So that's 45. We're at 545. I am going to jump right into the other thing I wanted to talk about, which is not harmonics. We already did that to a bit. Um, I'm going to turn on the call in in a second, too, and we can talk about this particular item. But here is the story that someone sent me. And it's not a story per se. It's, it's more or less analytics, which is analytics are the best. So I got this. Um, this is the Google Analytics for the term ham radio. These are web searches, ham radio. In 2004, we were at over, a, what is that, 100 a month, basically. And now today, we are at, come on, 28. December, uh, we had 28, basic, whatever that is. Thousands, actual 28, I don't know, some kind of value. But you can see it's declining. So I went, that's interesting. So I went to web search. And, you know, first of all, I'm thinking, well, why could that be? There's no way, you know, everybody, there's so much activity now on amateur radio. It's just so much cool stuff going on. That just can't be possible. So I said, okay. Well, what else we got here? We got image search, we got news search, we got Google Shopping. Aha, YouTube search. So I flipped this around and bam. So we started out in 2008, 27, and it pops all the way up to, come on, God, it's so, so touchy. Ah! 93, basically 100, 100 in 2018. But then this note here says an improvement to our collection data system was applied from 8-5-2017. So we see record growth, boom, boom, boom. And then they applied this leveling, basically, criteria to whatever how uh, YouTube works, which I was like, uh, OK. So then starting to take off again and boom, right here, boom. June 2019, which could be um, Hamvention, I'm assuming. And then it's been not bad, and although it's in some kind of a decline, I imagine that's just correcting um, as you see corrections here. But I have a feeling that it's going to start going up again, or we're going to be having it go up. So I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are. I'm going to turn on the call-ins. So if you want to call on your thoughts for is... The interest in ham radio declining. Now, I do want to point out, because I, I love these analytics, the largest states that are searching for this is Wyoming, West Virginia, Maine, Alaska, North Dakota, Vermont, New Hampshire, New Mexico, Idaho, and Oklahoma. And if you flip it to web search, but flip it back, Idaho, Utah, Alaska, Montana, Wyoming. Found that very interesting. So I'm going to fill my beer. The call-in is on. Why don't you call if you're interested? All right. Let's see if there's anybody. I'll put my headphones on. I'm also reading the chat. Analytics for the term amateur radio are better and consistent. So here we go. That was the other thing I wanted to do, too. It's it's also there. So amateur radio, woo, that really topped out. That's 25. But flip it over, flip it and reverse it. Same kind of deal, right? It's it's growing all the way up to 100. So we're building up. And then they're like, oh, we, we're going to level this. And so now what's happening? Taking off again. So hmm. let's see. Do we have anybody over on the the fun side of the house? Nobody yet. So I just lost my metrics. There they are. Okay. Agree with you. I think the, oh, so uh, Good Game Ham Radio and Bees and Outdoors says, I think uh, interest in ham radio is changing, not declining. The Smoke and Ape and I were discussing this. Smoke and Ape, another good YouTube channel. Check him out. And the reality is that the corpse 
are definitely not making any effort to expand their demographic. Uh, that could be true. I don't necessarily agree. I think Yesu, I think Yesu and Icom both, uh, they reach out to newer hams in different ways. And I, I, I just, they, they do different things that are reaching out to, to newer hams. I, I totally, I don't know. I see it differently a bit. Hmm. Uh, Andrew says, I blame sunspots. I think that's probably an accurate, an accurate thing. Trevor says, I think ham radio is like model trains, fun to build and tinker with, but not so much fun to operate. Really? I know. I love to operate. He's from Melbourne. Uh, also, I have a couple of bow fangs, but don't do anything apart from CB. I believe CB in Australia is in the 440. It's in um, 70 meter or 70 centimeter space, but I could be wrong. Sean Wieland or Wyland says ICOM is coming out with a new SDR, the IC705. Yeah, we had Ray Novak actually called in to the show uh, a couple of months ago, and we talked about it for a while. We've we've I talked about it after. Um, God, I've talked about it since I heard about it. I'm super interested in that radio for a number of reasons, which you have all heard many times. Last comment too long. Many blind people. Our hams, they gave up when accessibility and phones. Yeah, that's true. Dakota, Rich, uh, Richard made a good point. Um, the accessibility for people that have vision issues is tough with, um, with some amateur radios. That's true. His example was like going to trade shows like four-wheel drive stuff. That is a whole group of folks who could be introduced to it. Yeah. Good game, Ham Radio Bees. You, you make a wonderful point. So I've done podcasts with the Jeep Talk Show. I'm doing another one in the future on APRS. Um, I'm doing a – obviously, we have the Fang Gang, which is a large portion. There are so many people rocking bow fangs on their tactical gear now that are YouTube or Instagram influencers. People constantly contact me on Instagram. Uh, about bow fangs and you know what it looks like it's a bow fang with the extendo battery on it and an abri they actually have vinyl patches now for it and so that would be an adjacent part of the hobby um, preppers prepper radios survivalist radios they're all aspects of the hobby and just like we were talking about with becky last week it's kind of a what would you call it um, and it's an adjacent hobby makers right maker space it's an adjacent hobby um, we mentioned Kyle, who's also on YouTube. Kyle got, or some people in his his college got a license because they wanted to track down solar cars. And ham radio HTs go way further than FRS, so that's why they went that way. Amishur says, Lab 599 Discovery TX500 looks promising. It looks awesome, but everything is external on that thing. There's no internal power. There's no internal tuner. And, you know, you can say the same thing about the 705. It doesn't have an internal tuner. But I'd rather have a portable radio have internal power than I would a radio have an internal tuner. You guys can all say I'm wrong. But uh, this is specifically for the soda mindset. With soda, I kind of just want it all in one little box and I can just go. I know you can have an external battery, but it's nice if it's all just in the radio already. It makes it much easier and less things to worry about. Uh, Ham Radio Concepts still in the chat. I might have missed his comment. I wouldn't mind getting into ham in the UK, but license seems more daunting to me. I might have missed his comment. Let me go back up here. Um, okay, we got a caller. Charlie. Hey, Charlie, go ahead. Entry notice on. You there, Charlie? Hey, Josh. Hey, what's up? I think that part of the problem with the analytics is that the internet users are getting smarter about things, right? Sure. Um, you have a number of people who, for whatever reason, don't want their searches tracked and use things to obfuscate their searches. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, if you do that, Google's not going to catch you on, on their analytics. They're not going to be able to track what it is you're searching for. Uh, with the same idea, if you use alternative search engines, uh, something other than Google, say DuckDuckGo, 
Oh, again, great point. Google's not going to be able to keep track of that. And the few preppers that I do know are they all the kind use of Duck, people Duck, that don't. Yep, you're right. Great point. Uh, by uh, the way, uh, guys, I see you pointing, so I'll, I'll let you talk. No, no, I, I, you're you're totally right. Real quick, and then I'll let you go back to it. Um, the Modern Rogue just made a video about concealing kind of your um, online footprint. And one of the recommendations is use DuckDuckGo. And if you're not using DuckDuckGo, I highly recommend you look into it. Go watch their video. Go to the Modern Rogue and check out what they have. They have a lot of really cool tips, and most of them are completely free. You could start doing this now to get your uh, online footprint removed so that you're not being just have your information taken and made profiles about in God knows what systems and sold to who knows however many people. But go ahead, Charlie. Go ahead. Continue. You still there? So you combine, you know, things like uh, people that are highly sensitive about their privacy, and you combine people that are uh, worried about what, uh, you know, their their tracks are leaving online, and so on and so forth. And then you take a big chunk of your analytics and make them somewhat invalid, right? Right. And the thing is that. We are in a portion of the um, of the population who is more tech savvy than the average, and that portion of the population is going to be the one that's going to be using these tools the most. Mm-hmm. It's true. If you're on a Raspberry so you Pi, end up duck, duck, go. <laughs> with analytics that are not great, specifically for super tech things. You are uh, 100% accurate, and considering that amateur radio enthusiasts are largely pretty technical people, I would say the younger folks definitely coming up um, in an amateur radio are, are of that computer technical mindedness. So, very good, very good point. I appreciate the, the call on that. I got a call, but they left, so I'll, I'll talk to you later, Charlie, okay? 7 3. 7 3. Well, I got a call and they left. I might not have gotten into it in time. I apologize. I didn't have the notification on, so I didn't hear it. But if you want to call back, go ahead and I'll, I'll have you on. Sorry about that. Uh, Ken S. in a, a great super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate the support. Your content pushed me to test in two weeks. Only dis- disagreement so far is how great IPA beer is. So either you think IPAs are bad, because I like IPAs. I don't really have beers I don't like. The only beer I don't like are sours when I am live streaming because they make me super, it's always like in my throat and I'm gassy when I'm drinking it. But I like all kinds of beer. I really don't have a beer I don't like, except for maybe a Shandy, but that's very specific. Uh, Smoking Ape got in there somewhere. One of the things that concerns me is that the ARRL with the new On the Air magazine and podcast targets folks who are not hams or interested in ham... Oh, and then it did get cut off. Um, I don't know that that's true. So I, I don't know. I, I, the the verdict is still out on that. I think that it's possibly, uh, it's well, it's definitely aimed to new, new hands. But I'm curious if it's not, as Becky said, a chance to showcase Elmer's, right? And um, I'm not going to pull it up, but... Uh, We obviously saw multiple articles from people that you could qualify as Elmers, right? And those people are providing information from that that vantage point. And so in that regard, I think that's what a lot of people need when they're starting out. And I know that's what a lot of people do, like we all do on, uh, on YouTube. All right, we'll take the first call first. Hi, caller, what's your name? Yeah, you're there, caller. Can't hear him. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Oh, wait, what happened? I don't know what happened. I think they were the same person, possibly. Are you there, caller? Okay. Something happened with their with their stuff. Uh, is line unmuted? Matt from Argentina, are you still there? No. That's weird. The system is very weird right now today. Line muted. Line unmuted. Hey, can you hear me, caller? Are you still there? 
I can hear you now. Oh, good. Okay, I think I had something screwed up on my end. That's my fault. What's your name? Uh, my name's Rob, KD9KLI. KLI. Got it. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. Enjoying your uh, live stream here, and I just thought I'd chime in. Uh, Shoot. Kind of explain my story a little bit about uh, how I came across your channel. It wasn't really a search. It was kind of just showed up in my recommended back in January of 2018. Mm. And uh, I, I, I was familiar with ham radio when I was in my 30s in the in the 90s. I kind of checked into it, but uh, the guys that I talked to were all just on local repeaters, and they were you know 20 or 30 years older than me, and they just really didn't have anything in common with me. Sure. But uh, I found your channel. I found uh, Ham Radio 2.0, uh, Ham Radio Concepts, and then I found some podcasts like the Ham Radio Workbench, and it, it all just kind of came naturally. I didn't really search for it. It just kind of kind of showed up, so I don't know if the analytics would pick that up. No, not necessarily. Um, that's a good point, because you're not necessarily searching for it if it's just like, oh, I see that in the uh, the related bar and i click on it and oh i subscribe to that guy and then you start seeing other people that are content similar to mine or whomever um then yeah it, it wouldn't show up so that's a good point too you make a good point there and then with sure. all with with all the channels and everything there's just so much you know it's a broad range you can do hf you can do poda you can do digital modes you can do ft8 and it's yep. just a, you finally realize all the things that are out there that is a very good point as well, is that ham radio is so diverse. And that's a good point as well, is, is what's, the, what's the reality that people just aren't searching for amateur radio or ham radio? They're searching for Elecraft, or they're searching for Summits on the Air, or they're searching for POTA, Wolf River Coils, or ICOM IC705. They're going to know what they're looking for, and so they may not be looking, per se, for just ham radio. Maybe that's, yeah. I, that, that's that a good was point. Just the point I wanted to get across. And thanks for taking the call. Mm -hmm. Hey, I appreciate it. Thanks for calling in. All right, Rob, take it easy. Have a good night, and maybe I'll see you over in the live stream after chat. All right, so uh, let's see. Jerry, Gene, Josh, it's guys like you that help increase interest, as YouTube is one of the main ways people first learn of interest and in, yeah, that they would have never existed i totally agree um that is kind of what youtube has turned into uh youtube was a weird place 10 years ago and it's gotten a it's still weird it's still bad in some cases but in this area of finding people that are experts kind of in their field i don't think i'm an expert i think i'm i think i'm good at turning over rocks and kind of figuring things out but i never really get like deep expert level but if you look at that jason uh km4 ack that you know i stumbled on him a couple of months ago with his raspberry pi videos i call him an expert and so if you wanted to go to that detail that level he's the guy right stuff like that so yeah youtube is the best i i <laughs> obviously if i didn't if i didn't like youtube i wouldn't be here yeah uh am i Oh, that's cool. So Jerry Jean says, it's like another hobby of mine, barbershop singing, which is having huge growth because of YouTube. Yeah, well, sure, why not? That's very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm a pundit. Oh, okay, I'm a pundit. <laughs> And somebody mentioned that they found uh, my stuff on Modern Rogue, which makes sense. Uh, general and no HF to Alan owning a Wolf River Coil. Yeah, so there you go. He's got a 7300 and a Wolf River Coil. And that was from Adam. So, yeah, right on. So that that that's about what I feel. I don't think that it's an indicator of anything. I think it's more of a an interesting note. And then we've got this weird stuff here where the YouTube algorithm or the way they track YouTube is, is not working very well. I don't get that, but yeah. So let me make sure I got through everything. I'm formally or cordially inviting you to go to the after chat if you are so interested in. The uh, Twitch is Angry Shoverbot. Loyal posted that earlier, but if you join us over on Discord, the link is in the description for that. 
and Zach is posting the link right now to our Discord. That is an easy way to find us over there where we do the after chat. And I think that is going to do it. So before I go, I got to make sure I, I give the big shout out to the patrons because uh, largely it is because of the patrons that I can I can do a lot of the stuff that I can do now. And it really does mean a lot. So thank you all for for supporting both the live streams and the standalone videos, which, you know, I produce one of a week. And for those of you that don't know, I have a Patreon account. It's linked below. It's a dollar, and the dollar level gets you the newsletter. I apologize. That newsletter is coming out. It should come out this weekend. It was really late uh, just because everybody was sick. I got sick New Year's Eve, and I haven't been well um, since just a couple of days ago. I started feeling better, and now I've got something else going on. But any hoodle, that doesn't matter to you. But big thanks to the patrons. I super appreciate it. These are our producer level they uh, support us on lots of things, but they're also the one that pick the first of the month discussion that we have. So we're getting ready for next month. I've got a list of uh, 12 to 15 show ideas, and they get to pick the ones that they like the most. And that's what we bring forward, and that's always the first Friday of the month. So anyway, big thank you to Carrie Blackwell, Jason Brown, Jason Siebert, David Dancero, Danny Miller, Wesley Magyar, Barbara Schrock, Will Ladd, Evan Hartman. By the way, Evan, uh, admin extraordinaire, um, he is in California. He is coming over here. At least that is uh, what the plan was. So he should be here shortly, and he will be in the shack on the uh, after chat with me hopefully soon. So if you're interested in seeing Evan, uh, if he wants to be on camera, then hop on over to the, uh, the after chat. Franklin Lewis, Brad Snyder, Dennis Dunderdale, Garrett Larson, Jonathan Franson, 86 DM Dennis, the Wyoming Ham, he was in the chat, Randall Hinsley, uh, Dennis Mickelson, George Gaini, Andy, Kenny Miyamoto, Ron Thorson, Ken Hall, Sean Bales, um, Ur Dragetchevik, uh, I think that's right. Ur, please tell me I'm doing that right because I haven't heard from you since I was not doing it right, and I hope I got that right. Dragetchevik, yeah. Chad. Uh, Rob Zare, Zarj, Devin B. Hedge, Mark Chase, Raymond Cracker, Geraldo Kelso, Rob K. B. C. R. Lee Harrell, Michael Kearney, Steve Barker, Mark Fields, Corey Sheldon, Brad Nadal, Stephen Hunt, Connor, Connard Carroll, Mike Marusin, Mike Kearley, Harald Carpenter, and, well, and the Brew Crew did fill up my uh, glass there. Thank you very much, guys. Big support to you. Stephen Hunter. Justin Rao, Stephen Carduz, Brian Fairbanks, Richard Smith, Hercules, KC1LZR, Mike Zarrett, Mike Flowers, Stephen Blanford, Tom Wright, The Tan Hat, Mike McCarty, Good Game Bees, D uh, David Gerald, or Gerald, um, Mike Deards. It's like beards, but with a D, right? That's what you told me. Simon Deards. Uh, Michael Dubay, Michael Iafrato, Ia Ia Iafrato. I think that's what he told me. I also screwed up his name. God, there's a lot of names that people support me with. Sometimes difficult names, and I apologize for screwing them up. And Don Riley. Whew. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you had fun with that. If you haven't already, give me the thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you have not. And I will talk to you very soon because I'm going over to the after chat, so I hope to see you there. Take it easy. See ya.